Hey guys, welcome back to the Cult Classic Cage Show. And the Nintendo Direct just happened, and honestly, I was really impressed with it. It was like, I don't even know how to describe it. It was really good, and this is coming from someone, I don't really talk about the rumors of Nintendo Directs. When they announce the Nintendo Directs, I don't really talk about them very much. I don't really uh, make predictions. That's the last thing I honestly want to do. So many other people make predictions when it comes to the PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo events. I hate doing that because then it really gets you overly excited, especially with some of the crazy-ass predictions I constantly see online. So I personally avoid that. But man, coming as someone who didn't expect anything, like I expected nothing, I was actually really, really surprised and really happy. So without any further ado, let's just jump right into it. The first thing Nintendo kicked the Direct off with was an expansion to Monster Hunter Rise called Sunbreak. And it is described as a massive expansion. It's coming out summer 2022. Honestly, every time they show off this game, I'm baited into buying it. It looks really cool. I'm waiting around to see how a PC port turns out. Honestly, I think I'm playing myself because... My PC will probably bomb at playing it. But hey, if I manage to murder my PC, I think my PC would be happy, so I'm willing to give it a try. Next was a card game called Voice of Cards. It's a tabletop RPG, comes out October 28th. Game looks really interesting. Honestly, after Yu-Gi-Oh, I don't see myself getting into many card games because 2000s Yu-Gi-Oh was just the height for me personally, but one of my friends said, yo, this looks really dope, I'm really interested in it, and that's great. They also announced Disco Elysium the Final Cut, comes out October 12th. It's an interesting game to put on the Switch, but I will warn, if anyone plays handheld, to wait and see how the text will play out on the handheld device, because when I play on my PS5 in my game room, I can't read the text from like the, the sofa area. I have to wear glasses. So honestly, my warning definitely is to just make sure if you play handheld that the game will be readable because there is definitely a lot of reading. There's definitely a lot to that RPG when it comes to that stuff. So look out for that. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. They're dropping the rest of the expansion on October 29th. New story, new characters, new stages. Looks interesting. Definitely cool that they're finishing that off. Chocobo GP. It is a kart racer by Square Enix that includes Final Fantasy characters. It kind of looks like a bootleg Mario Kart 8. It doesn't look terrible, but it doesn't look great either. The big selling point seems to be 64 player elimination tournaments, which is definitely cool. That comes out 2022. The next big release that they showed off is Mario Party Superstars. We already knew this game was coming out. Drops October 29th. It looks really fun. Honestly, I love N64 Mario Party. Definitely will bring back some memories. The biggest selling point of the game is the fact that you can play the stages entirely online. This is a first. Um, Nintendo has been kind of ignorant towards giving us this, but people have wanted it for so long. I can only hope that the internet will be able to sustain um, these long form matches because unfortunately Nintendo Online 99% of the time is just shit. <laughs> it, it's sad to say but it's true. Um, the most successful game on there is Mario Kart so I hope that it will live up to the Mario Kart 8 standard. Speaking of shitty online. The last character reveal for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate will be on October 5th. Honestly, it's crazy that uh, Smash Bros. is finally coming to an end. I wonder who the next character will be. I trust nobody when it comes to leaking for this game because we've seen that it's always been off for whatever reason. But looking forward to seeing who will be the final character. It's probably going to be Waluigi. At least that's what I think in my heart, so yeah. The huge surprise reveal was Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Oh my god, when they first showed it off, I'm like, did they rework the art style for World War Z 
to put it on the Switch or something. And my friend was just like, this is some of the Last of Us shit. And I'm just like, no, Blick, this is not a thing. And then they showed bomb trees. And then they showed Kirby. It's like, holy shit, what is going on here? This is like insane. When Kirby starts running around, you're just getting these awesome Mario Odyssey vibes. I am not a Kirby fan, but this I have to try. This is crazy. I loved all the shit that you're doing in the game. The exploration when Kirby just goes crazy and starts kicking some ass honestly this is crazy I was not expecting that I know that a lot of Kirby fans must be like dropping their shit right now that comes out spring 2022 I really like this apocalyptic looking scenario that's going on here apparently there's some dark stuff to this game I mean you're playing as a a little piece of chewing gum. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're playing as this uh, very lighthearted character, and it seems to be some sort of dark apocalyptic scenario. I mean, honestly, I don't expect it to get too dark, but overall, the premise is very interesting. I'm highly intrigued, waiting to see more. They announced that Animal Crossing New Horizons is going to have a direct in October, where they're going to talk about new content that will drop in November. Mario Golf Super Rush just got a new DLC update. You get to play as Koopa Troopa, Ninji, you get two new courses, and it's free. Honestly, this game really needs the content when it came out super bare bones. I had a little bit of fun with it, but it's really nothing special. They announced Disney Magical World 2, Enhanced Edition coming holiday. Star Wars KOTOR fans, if you are concerned that a writer who doesn't even like the game is writing the remake, well then you have the original game that will be coming to Switch November 11th. Seems pretty cool. More than likely I'm going to try it out. I haven't played it yet. I was excited to try the KOTOR remake, hoping that it would be a faithful remake, but honestly when you have miserable people that don't even like the product that they're making, I lose faith in it altogether. That's just how it is for me. I mean, it makes perfect sense, I think, so yeah. I'm looking forward to this over the KOTOR remake. Hopefully I'm wrong about it, but we'll see. I'm not a big strategy fan, but I can see why people are extremely excited for Triangle Strategy. It looks beautiful. I love the art style. Square Enix has been listening to a lot of fan feedback for this game, and with that fan feedback, they showed off a lot of new mechanics, that honestly look like they do make the game look better. And it drops March 4th, 2022. Two games I was definitely not expecting to come to the Switch is Dying Light and Dying Light 2. I was hoping that the original Dying Light would see a 60 FPS upgrade for the PS5, but didn't get that. But also I'm just glad that people on the Switch get to play Dying Light if they haven't already. It's one of my favorite PS4 games. Is very interesting that it's coming to the Switch. The Platinum Edition of that drops October 19th. Dying Light 2 will be a cloud version. That is dropping February 4th. I wonder how that's going to turn out. Could be interesting or could be a bomb, but we'll wait and see. On to one of the games I am honestly most excited for. Oh my god, every time they show off Metroid Dread, I am just left with this crazy eerie feeling. Honestly... I'm really anticipating this game. Nintendo's really pushing it. I think they want to see a massive resurgence in Metroid, especially with the Metroid Prime game that they are working on. Honestly, every time I see this game, it it blows me away. I love the animations. I love 2D games. I mean, my favorite, one of my favorite platforms of all time is the Game Boy Advance. If you love 2D, that's the place to go. So I have um, a f deep, long-lasting love for 2D, especially with great animation. I love the way Samus moves in this game. She has this awesome presence about her. Very graceful. She also like bears this immense confidence in the way that she acts. Honestly, super excited for this game. Definitely a day one purchase for me. If you haven't played Metroid... Maybe this is your time to jump in. Maybe even play the other games. 
I haven't played all of them. At one point, I really do want to accomplish that. The only game I have played was uh, Metroid Fusion. Honestly, great GBA game. If you haven't played it, highly recommended. Definitely follows the story from that. They showed off uh, basically the story, the concept. What is Samus Aran doing? Where is she going? How does it look? They showed a lot of different areas. The world that she will be investigating is very vast. Very interesting. I'm highly anticipating the game. Can't say that enough. The more that they show the game, the more I want it. It just doesn't end. This campaign to win my money is so ridiculous. Like, Nintendo, just stop already. I can only give you $60 because the collector's edition of the game got sold out before it was even officially announced. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I'm just a wee bit butthurt by that. But anyway, moving on. Retro game fans. Castlevania Advance Collection, Act Razor Renaissance, both available on the Switch already. Shadow Run Trilogy is coming out next year. Honestly, at some point I'm probably going to try out all these games because they're games I missed out on. Definitely want to see what's up. Now we get to the Nintendo Online update, and they announced a new plan. Honestly, I'm not a big fan. To me, the current plan is already a nothing burger that they charge $20 for more if you have a family plan, but here they announced that we will now be getting N64 games and Sega Genesis games if we so choose to update to the new plan. Honestly, I don't really see the appeal in this in terms of Sega Genesis because I already have a Sega Genesis Mini. I also have the Sega Genesis collection on the Switch, and I really don't think that they will deviate very far from the games that are already presented, a lot of these games are probably just going to be repurposed onto this online that needs content. <laughs> Honestly, just just make the online better. That's what's key. I would pay the money if at least the online was improving, but this really sucks. The big thing is the N64 games. Honestly, they do look interesting. Uh, a couple of them I missed out on had an N64, but I was really young back then, couldn't play all the games I wanted to. Another big deal for this is the fact that they are dropping N64 and Genesis controllers. They'll be $50 each. Honestly, kind of tempted to get the N64 controller, so maybe as an adult I could figure out how to hold it because as a child I definitely was quite confused. So maybe all these years later, I can come to some form of conclusion on that. And the Nintendo Online new plan will be arriving uh, late October. Honestly, this sucks. <laughs> this really does suck. It's not the worst thing in the world. I mean, I just want good online. A lot of the online games, even from Nintendo themselves, are complete dives. I don't really play Super Smash Bros. online very much because of that, and it's depressing because I do enjoy the game. The next thing that Nintendo talked about was the Mario movie, which will be coming out December 2022. And look, I get why people are upset. They want Charles Martinet to voice Mario, but honestly, I look at it this way. Who knows if he even wanted to do this? It seems like a very large project. They're saying that Mario will be speaking a lot, so it could definitely be a lot on a voice actor to do that, especially coming from the games, which the characters don't really much uh, speak. Like, they talk very occasionally. It's not really big voice acting projects when you're playing a typical Mario game. But look, I mean, we getting Chris Pratt as Mario and... Honestly, I like Chris Pratt. He seems like one of the very few people in Hollywood that don't eat their own farts for breakfast. So, I'm willing to at least hear it out. Chris Pratt is generally a pretty upbeat and charismatic actor. Who knows? It might be interesting. I obviously don't hold this Mario movie to high esteem. But, if it's at least better than the Mario Bros movie, I mean, I guess that is a plus. Another big thing that seems to be interesting to a lot of people is that Jack Black will be playing Bowser. 
definitely want to see what's up with that as well since that seems to be the only thing that my friends personally think is wow that's actually a good pick so definitely see what's up with that finally nintendo showed off splatoon 3 again and wow it has been a while since we saw this and they showed off gameplay a robot that rolls around and hits people and then also a ninja squid that's all over the place looks really cool they showed off uh, splatsville they spoke a little bit about it apparently squids are way more mischievous than i originally thought and then they also talked about the story and i believe it's called return of the mammalians apparently it's some form of story which sees mammals returning back to this world and how it affects um these squid characters whatever so the game is slated for 2022 overall what they have shown looks really good so far i'm interested i bought the first and second games and they are games that i really do have fun every time i jump on so definitely cool game to want to play with friends story mode looks interesting i didn't play the splatoon 2 story mode should I do it? Should I go back and play it? Let me know in the comment section down below. Now, onto the game I am most excited for. A game that for many years has been dormant. I am, like, ecstatic about this game. And that is Bayonetta 3. When they first started the trailer, I immediately thought Bayonetta 3 because it looked like the area in which started off Bayonetta 2 in the city area that looked kind of like New York City, so I'm just like, yo, Bayonetta 3, Bayonetta 3. And then the monsters just didn't look like Bayonetta 3 monsters, or Bayonetta monsters in general, so I was kind of like, this is weird, this is extremely weird. And you see the military fighting them, then eventually I see purple bullets hit one of the monsters' backs, and you look at the insignia of the purple bullets in his EP, and that's how Platinum Games loves to introduce themselves, they're very stylish in that way. Then eventually the camera turns and we see the mascot from Astro Chain. And then I'm just like, oh god, no, no, please, no. Because I know Astro Chain, there's some areas that are very city-like. And I'm just like, please don't be Astro Chain. So by that point, I'm kind of like, sus. But then the monster takes a swing at the mascot. And then on the actual weapon that they're swinging with, you see a glimpse of Bayonetta's reflection and she hits this motherfucker and it is so awesome. Bayonetta makes her official entrance and return in style. One of the most charismatic and badass characters I have ever seen and of course she does not disappoint. Her look is honestly, it could potentially be one of my favorites of the three games so far. Bayonetta proudly proclaims that she's unfashionably late, but promises to give us everything that we want, and honestly, the charisma from this woman is hilarious. It always gets me every time. The voice actress is returning, Helena Taylor is back, clearly, and it seems like maybe she is not voicing Bayonetta, but maybe Cereza the young girl from the original game who is a young version of Bayonetta and a potential giveaway for that is the fact that this Bayonetta is sporting the same hairstyle that Cereza was sporting in the original game. The Bayonetta franchise is definitely no stranger to time travel in general. It's actually what links the first and second games together in terms of the villain. So it really would not surprise me if this is actually Cereza as a young adult of some sort and this trailer definitely gives us a lot in terms of gameplay you're seeing bayonetta summon monsters with her dance and she is kicking ass using those monsters you're seeing all sorts of crazy shit i think that possibly this bayonetta is underaged and the reason why i say that is because when she does summons <laughs> um Clearly, it's not as revealing as the first two games, so who knows? It could be that Bayonetta is a lot younger here, more younger than we presume, maybe 16 or 17, or maybe the Bayonetta franchise is set to target a T rating instead of an M rating. 
but I don't think that's necessarily the case here. A lot of people seem to be saying that the mystery character shown at the end of this trailer is Jean, and I really do not think that is the case as well. I think that this is a more sinister character that we don't know yet that has to be introduced because Jean is not malicious in terms of when she uh, put Bayonetta to sleep in the first game. Jean does what she does in order to hide the eye of the world, which Bayonetta possesses one, and to do that, encasing Bayonetta and locking her away for 500 years was to prevent the inevitable and predicted calamity if the events that happened in the first game uh, were happening, which they did. And this is from the past events. Now, in Bayonetta 1, the current event was that Jean was brainwashed into being an enemy of Bayonetta, and that's the only reason why she ends up fighting with Bayonetta in the first game. Another reason why I personally do not think this is Jean is specifically because I think it would be way too on the nose for Platinum. If you don't know, Bayonetta 1 and 2 do have pretty sophisticated stories. There's things you could definitely miss. So for them to just quickly throw Jean in there, I think it would be way too obvious. We haven't seen Jean. We haven't seen Rodan. We haven't seen Enzo. So I'm really interested to see where these characters fit. But man, taking a look at this gameplay again, I really love the purple guns that Bayonetta has. At first I thought they were blue, but upon looking at them more closely, it's definitely purple. I'm loving this butterfly that she summons, and I love all the moves that she's doing, uh, the summons of the monsters, she's making tornadoes. Man, this chick is just doing everything right now, and it looks really exciting. I think Bayonetta 3 is definitely going to, if if it's the case, close out the series in a very bombastic way. I think that we're going to have a lot of power here, but the stakes are probably going to be higher than ever. I'm wondering how this will play with the Bayonetta of the modern timeline, the Bayonetta from 1 and 2. If this is Cereza that we're playing as, how does this focus in on Bayonetta from our timeline? That is what I really want to know. Things may get really crazy. Honestly, if you haven't played Bayonetta 1 and 2, definitely play them. Because if you jump into 3, you will probably be confused. It is just what it is. But man, that closes out what I've been waiting for for so long. I'm so excited. Holy shit. That was a lot to cram into one event. I think the best thing I could take away from it is the fact that I think that there's something for everyone here. If you're into kids games, if you're into... Kirby and Mario Odyssey worlds, if you're into Dying Light, if you're into card games, if you're into kids games, if you're into retro games, there's something for everyone here, which is great. Hopefully, everyone will have something for a holiday season to want, and if not, early, hopefully early 2022 will be something that you'd like. But yeah, Bayonetta, bro. Oh my gosh. I, I'm so happy when the event happened. I was I was watching it with my buddies and when the trailer started I knew that it was Bayonetta in my heart and then like when I saw it like I was just screaming and squealing it was absolutely disgusting and uh, I don't usually do that kind of stuff so the fact that this happened was like a pretty big deal so yeah man uh, I think from what I heard the director said that the game is near completion um, I think that the game will probably come out, like, mid-2022, like, during the summertime, I'm guessing. I don't think it would be very beneficial to the game itself to release it early in the year, specifically because everything that was supposed to be coming out in 2021 got delayed into t early 2022. So to release it during a time that's going to be pretty hectic probably wouldn't be the best for the game. Overall, let me know your thoughts about this Nintendo Direct. Did you like it? What are you most excited for? Uh, what were you most surprised by? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you can, please like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. And with all that being said, guys, I'm hyped and I'm out.